so this is it's quite spectacular, isn't it? I mean, I, again, this is a very new acquisition of the galleries. Um, this is by a Swiss artist. But I think when you walk into this room, you can't help but your eyes to be drawn to this landscape. It's almost as if you've walked into a dream. Um, we were talking earlier, there's something very surreal about this, as if you, you know, woken up or you're actually, I don't know if you're dreaming or you're, you're subconscious or whatever, but there is something quite extraordinary. So this is um, Ferdinand Hodler. He was a Swiss artist. So he starts off with his career actually painting um, landscapes of the kind of alpine scenery for the kind of growing um, tourist market. Um, and then he very quickly changes tack um, and he's creating using much more colour and much more vibrancy within these, um, within these works. Um, and he it becomes, I mean, he's one of those artists as well that you actually, it, it's forgotten about for quite a long period of time. I think it's only in the 1970s that he is revisited again. And we might equate him with artists such as um, Edward Munch or Georges Seurat in that same kind of body um, of work. So if you don't know him, please do do a little bit more of an exploration with his work. And he, he paints all types of things as well. This is not, you know, the only thing that he paints, he, you know, landscapes, etc. But there is something absolutely magical. And I was saying earlier as well about, I feel as if I've gone into, you know, the film The Wizard of Oz, and um, you've gone from the kind of black and white moment, and then when we get to kind of munchkin land, um, and that's what I feel when we, we're, we're in here, we can always envisage um, Dorothy and the, the scarecrow and the lion kind of trundling along this landscape. And um, so I will leave it there and I will, you will, hand over to... A round of applause for Stanimir de Vitra. So, first of all, thank you for your that beautiful explanation. I don't believe it. I think this painting depicts my small village in Bulgaria. Oh, and I'll okay. tell you what. And you're going to tell us why. <laughs> Where I was now occupying, I spent weekends for years. My great grandparents would watch over us, old peasants would bat and play. Where they name a lamb would have to eat it for St. George's Day. Horses were whipped with some little sticks for immature hands lusting for power. Elders rewinded the sets to dance to songs about white roses and black trees. Then take a nap while we played with a deflated ball on a hill. And that hill led to the village's water tap that made us carry heavy buckets up the same hill. A brick house with two extensions, one of which was so low that you could climb on from the side garden. Then you could climb on your grandpa's shoulders and voyage on one side, while the rest are beheading chickens and tell you that they were around kidneys. The front yard would allow you to be mischievous and when no one was watching, to accidentally let the dogs out of their cage and cry about it because the father was giving you the love. <laughs> Until the dogs came back from the journey and I'll come to an old tired, the little naive you said, go with to trap them. This is a time and place where you only buy bread with coupons or meet a centipede on the wall for the first time or you're trying to fall asleep with a, under an orchestra of crickets where you can only walk or be in a carriage moved by a horse. Where after years of loving them, you end up eating boiled wheat sprinkled with lemon zest at your great grandparents' graves. And that love is now foreign, like the blurred faces of the village kids you played with. When you didn't imagine you'd be on an island far away, in front of a computer, buried within tall buildings, saying, Hello, how may I help you today? <laughs> over and over again. When your poems weren't so good with great, they were not poems. You were happy singing and dancing at the center of it all. Yet you didn't rely on a painter to remind you of a time when tradition still hadn't left you. <laughs>